Hi, good evening, everyone. I'm JP Tong, and welcome to, the, to today's program, Detox Your Mind. Well, today I'm going to talk about something that I've always been promoting, and I'm sure by, by now all of you would have known, that throughout my programs, um, every now and then, I would actually bring up a very important topic, which I subscribe to all the time, and that is gratitude. So today, yes, I'm going to talk more in depth of the importance of gratitude and how and what it actually means and, you know, how, how does it actually help one detox the mind and have more clarity and um, have more peace and joy in our lives when we practice gratitude. And I'm sure a lot of you have heard of this, this um, topic before. Uh, Oprah Winfrey has been talking about it all the time. Many, many people, you know, who advocate self-help, finding yourself, uh, being happier and all that, they always talk about gratitude. Okay, so what is gratitude? So according to, I did a bit of, of homework, so according to the Cambridge Dictionary, it says, quote unquote, gratitude is a strong feeling of appreciation to someone or something for what the person has done to help you. So I'll repeat, a strong feeling of appreciation to someone or something for what the person has done to help you. So, it's, so it is an appreciation. Okay. So the key, the, the key is this: someone or something for what the person has done to help you. Okay. So someone or something that has helped you. So bear that in mind, and I will clarify uh, later on. Okay. So. All of us want to pursue some sort of happiness. All of us want to have to pursue some sort of clarity. And um, it is always conditional, right? So we always say, oh, you know, if I buy that car, I'm going to be happy. If I buy the house in this specific address or a specific square footage, I'm going to be happy. If I get this job, I'm going to be happy. You know, if I eat this food, I'll be happy. And the most... And for some people, oh, you know, I, if I fit, you know, I have this bucket list that I need to fulfill. And if I do, if I manage to fulfill my bucket list, then I'm going to be happy. So the point is, our happiness is conditional. It's conditional. So, we, so listen to this. And you can even ask yourself, how many times do we actually tell ourselves that if we're, you know, I, I'm only happy if I do this, 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 or if I have this, 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 and this. Okay, so think about it and see whether or not that is true for you. All right, so then I'm going to invite you to take another, to take another step back and ask yourself, why is it that your happiness is, deter is, is always determined upon fulfilling a certain goal or having a certain external uh you know that's something external so let's say you know oh if i get married i'm going to be happy if i have a partner i'm going to be happy if i have children i'm going to be happy and for some uh grandparents if i have grandchildren i'm going to be happy so it's so conditional that that the happiness sounds a bit uh, shaky in a sense and unreliable because your happiness is dependent on certain things and certain on certain things and certain e events from arising and then you'll be happy but ladies and gentlemen i'm sorry to to <laughs> be the to tell you this happiness is not dependent on anything external whether or not you have achieved something whether or not you're with someone whether or not the situations uh, meet your expectation. It is not dependent on that. Happiness is a state of the mind. It's a state of the mind. 
So, and that is why the cliche is, you can be happy if you can if you choose to be happy now. You can happy you can be happy now if you choose, if you choose to do so. So, how and some of you may ask, well, JP, how do I choose to be happy? Because I don't have this, I don't have that. So again, it's that habituation, you see, because ever since we were young, okay, I'm speaking in general terms, right? So again, it depends on your culture and your and the community that you are brought up in. And a lot of times they always say, oh, you know, um, I'll be, I mean, if, even, even when we were kids, oh, uh, we always compare. We've been, we're, we're always sort of compare to be competitive at school. Yes, I get it. But the thing is, when we do not look deeper uh, of why you need to excel and be ahead of of other students, and you just leave it, and you just leave it as such, you know, that you should always do higher. You should be the top ten or the top tier of your school. You you will leave children with a sense that we should always compare. But for what reasons, apart from getting into you know having a much better education and so on and so forth, it it kind of stops there. Now you see, it's. For personal growth, it may not help them because why? Yes, very good. You get you get good education, you get a good job, you have financial security. All that will help you. See, financial security, material abundance, that enables us to be more comfortable and to and you know and to have and to have more convenience in whatever it is that we want to do. But it's nothing to do with happiness. Nothing to do with that. So we have to be very, very clear. So when, you know, so when we educate children, we also have to slowly instill in their mind that that has not, excelling in school and all that is just for their financial stability later on. But it's nothing to do with happiness, nothing whatsoever. Okay, so, so but unfortunately, you see, during my generation, I was, I, I was not uh, educated in that way. Nobody's fault because that's how, communities are and culture and culturally um, you always compare you know our parents would be saying oh you know look look at so-and-so's children they're always getting A's look at you or you know uh, oh you should you should do this you should do that look at the other it's always comparing 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 and that's how we've we've grown up and and another thing that or oh, yeah, another culture that is that is that we are all immersed in without even realizing is uh, consumerism. Consumerism. I mean, when you open your magazines or if you go on the line, social media, how people are always promoting their products, and it's always if you have this, you'll be better off. Okay, if you have this, you'll be better off. If you buy this, if you wear this shirt, if you wear this dress. You be you be beautiful. You will be, you know, uh, you'll be happy. You'll be accepted. So it's it's all this brainwashing, okay? Which is what consumerism is all about. They brainwash you to to think that when you purchase that product, you are actually a, you're actually better off. You will feel happier, and so on and so forth. And this happens since we're a child. So. That's why if you look closely, if you look closely, you will actually realize that, yeah, actually we have been brainwashed all this while, right? And so many people, you know, so many people are afraid of being brainwashed, but we are already being brainwashed. It's, it's a matter of whether or not you're brainwashed in a way that will benefit you ultimately, or you're brainwashed in a way that would make, you know, that would not benefit you ultimately so that so brainwashing is good it's just how you're brainwashed all right so and what brainwashing is is literally imputing certain messages in your mind over and over and over and over again consistently through the years where it is so imprinted in your mind you think that's the reality that's how you think and that's how these fantastic PR companies sell their products. And, you know, companies pay millions 
to get that, you know, that, that, that imaging into every one of our mind. And that's how they do it. And that's why, that's why when you see a certain thing, so, oh, I must have it, I must have it. Because why? Because that's how they have been brainwashing us. Okay, so that's how they have been creating a certain habit in our mind without us even realizing it. All right, so take a step back and think about it. And those of you who are in the PR industry and in the advertising industry, that's how it works, right? So, okay, so again, so it's about, so it's the culture that we're brought up in, you know, so that if you do this, you're better off. If you do this, you know, if you travel to this place, uh, you'd be happier. If you eat this food, you'd be happier. Um, and so on and so forth. So, so what? So what's my point? We've been conditioned to believe that we will only be happier if dot 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 dot. So it's always very um, conditional. Okay. Let me see who's here. Um, hi, Jerry, Kirsten, Jesse. Uh, Zing, Louise, hello, Lily, Agnes, so fun, Brian. Uh, Nancy, hi, and the rest of you whom I whom I can't see your name. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, Louise says, yes, I agree. When I'm when I was young, my mom always compared me with and and neighbor children. They are pilot or doctor, but I'm so naughty and don't like to study. <laughs> But I'm very happy to work in Dharma to benefit everyone together with the big family. Wonderful. Uh, Lily says, my sons always remind me not to compare our friends to children. Exactly. Because why? That's because just be yourself. You know, just be yourself. What's what's the point of comparing? Because everyone is unique. It's 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 a parcel. It's it's a it's a package. There are things, there are attitudes or things in us that are that we excel in, and there's certain that we don't. So it's packaged. Nobody is perfect. Nobody's perfect. So comparing is will always lead to very detrimental results of stress, pressure, unhappiness, and so on and so forth. Okay. Hi, hi, Chris, hi Christine. So, yeah. So compare. So com, comparing when we have this habit of always comparing. You know, when you look at at some somebody having something oh how i wish i have that or you know oh you, and, and you hear somebody someone making millions oh how i wish i have that it's all great but always be mindful that external uh factors external factors external abundance you know whatever we have outside of us do not equate to happiness as long as you understand that, then you, then you're better off in that sense. Okay, because why? Then your hopes are not your hopes. Your ho you're hoping to be happy when you obtain a certain thing will not be there. Because why? A lot of times when we when we buy something or when we achieve a goal or when we, you know, when we fulfill our bucket list. Yeah, the hype is there, yay, and then it dies down. So that's how you check your mind. So it's very uh, temporary, and you just have to keep going on and on, and, it's, and it becomes very, very tiring. So um, yes, so let's move along. Any questions so far? Okay, and um, well, so a lot of times when we face challenges or obstacles in our lives, where you know we, things do not happen the way we want it to happen, because again, we've been brainwashed that um, that it's not good to have challenges and obstacles. We want to have a smooth sailing life, no worries, nothing. That is the type of mindset that we have been brainwashed or taught or instilled in our mind that that is a better choice or that is something that we should hope 
for and it's and for some people to pray for. Oh, may I pray to have, to have less obstacles? May I pray to have a smooth sailing life, no worries, and so on and so forth. Well, look deeper. Okay, so for those of you who have lived, okay, and have gone through ups and downs in life, think about it. If we have not gone through certain downs in our life, would we be where we are right now? Think about it. What have you see? If if our lives were smooth sailing, what could we have learned to make us more resilient? To make us look deeper in, you know, into our lives. To really appreciate what we have right now, okay. So if we had not gone through certain hard hardships or certain challenges and obstacles in life, would we even learn to appreciate what we have, and would we even be more resilient and wiser as a result of that? So think. So think again. So that is why, on a deeper level, for 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 those of us who want to pursue some some, you know. To pursue more happiness, more clarity, more peace in our lives, it's time to change the way we perceive obstacles and challenges in life. Actually, we should welcome them. We should welcome them because why? It is like it is it it is is you see one of the analogies that I like to give is we're like a you know we're like a rough diamond. And if you want to make it a perfect cut, you have to keep chipping. You have to always chip it. There's a lot of effort to chip and to cut the diamond until it's perfect, and that's that's what we are. That's our potential. But if we don't put in the effort, and we are always running away from difficulties in life, and we don't challenge ourselves, uh, you know, with a very positive mindset that yes, we need these challenges so that we can keep. You know, so that we can actually hone ourselves and uh, uh, chip away the rough sides of us, so that why? So that we be, we can become a brilliant diamond, and that's a that's a that's an analogy that I, that I always like to use. So that applies to us when we ch when we change the way when to when we perceive obstacles. That is actually very, very powerful. Instead of being in, like be always shunning away from obstacles and challenges, and and for some of us, you know, we immerse ourselves. You know, like myself when I was younger, I used to immerse myself and get so caught up with my with with my personal problems that I get all flustered and stressed by it. And not re not really understanding that you know to actually take a take a step back and, and and take another look, which I'll talk about shortly. Okay, so again, uh, how we should face challenges and obstacles in a constructive way. All right. So um, and why and why is it always like that? Why do we grow up? Handling obstacles like that was because that that was the environment that we grew up in. If our parents uh, handled obstacles and challenges with a lot of drama, then you see that's that is what we're used to seeing, and that is our reality. Then that is how we are going to react. That's how, you see. So it's whatever that we see, we will copy. Okay. So when we're younger, during our formative years. That's that's how we pick up certain attitudes from our parents. So if you, and it's not necessarily parents. It can be an adult when you were an adult when you're younger. There's a certain adult. It can be a teacher. It can be a guardian. It can be somebody. Some just whomever it is whom you look up to, whom you respect, whom um, you benchmark yourself with. You know, when I grow up, that's how adults handle things. So. Again, every person is different. Okay, and um, last but not least, understanding traumatic experiences or unpleasant experiences, and not knowing how to handle 
these negative experiences, all right? Not, not knowing how to, and we hold on to it, and we, reason, and we will try to reason it out because the mind, as I always say, will always try to regulate, will try to stabilize, will try to make sense of, of all these traumatic experiences or unpleasant experiences. And, and, and not and try our level best not to let it affect us. But because no one actually taught us how to handle these traumatic experiences or unpleasant experiences. So we, so we end up replaying it in our mind over and over and over and over and over again. And we lead our lives through these traumatic experiences and whatever, whatever reactions that arise based because of these unpleasant experiences, we actually look at life through that lens of whatever it is that you re that that arisen for you. So if if a lot of fear uh, came out because of that of the trauma, then whatever you do, it's always driven by your fear. It's if it's if it actually destroyed your trust, then you're extremely you know uh, not very trusting. If uh, and it can even affect your relationship with people in general, that you just brand everyone to be the same as whoever that person is who gave you that traumatic experience. So, but you see, it's not your fault because, because and it's no one's fault because we never grew up taught, you know, being taught how to deal with it. All right, so, so these can be some of the, the things that will actually make us not as happy as we can and make our life very, very um, unstable. Um, a lot of these afflictive emotions are in us because of all these things. Okay, so, so that is why it is time to practice gratitude. You see, gratitude, the practice of gratitude is so powerful, when, and I'll explain why. When you do it very, very well, all the things that I just spoke about will slowly become less and less and less. They will affect you less and less and less because you are practicing gratitude, okay? So, how do you practice gratitude? Okay, and like I said, and I'll repeat what Cambridge Dictionary wrote. So gratitude is a strong feeling of appreciation to someone or something for what the person has done to help you. Okay, so the key word is to help you. Well, to me personally, this, this pandemic, okay, uh, COVID-19 pandemic, was a very helpful way for me to practice gratitude, all right? It is because of a lockdown and a change of the lifestyle, it made me realize how I took my lifestyle for granted. Before the pandemic, right, going out was so easy, you don't have to think twice, you have to keep sanitizing, you didn't have to wear the mask, um, you, and you could meet with hundreds, if not thousands of people, it was not something you think twice about, right? But nowadays, you, you, everyone is reminiscing, oh, you know, when are we going to go back to the, to the pre-pandemic days where we can just hang out with friends, go out to restaurants, party, without thinking twice? Yeah, and that's, that's the sum of life. When we have something, when we, are, when, when we are surrounded with so much abundance, clean air, friends, family, electricity, all these things that we, that we have on a daily basis, we, don't, we forget to cherish them. We forget, we forget to cherish them. We take things for granted because we have it every day. So and it slips our mind and we're always looking for our bucket list to fulfill that happiness. And look, with this COVID, 
it made me realize that, wow, to go to walk out of where I stay is such a blessing. For me to even walk out and meet someone, okay, it's such a blessing. Such a blessing. To be with more than 10, 10 people, it's like unheard of. Wow. <laughs> you know? And, and I've not even hugged anyone since, since uh, the pandemic. No one, because it's like, okay, stay away. And usually when we see friends, you know, we hug each other. We don't do that anymore. Even seeing friends is always through, um, through the internet. So again, so it makes us realize, oh, you see that, and that's what, that's what gratitude, gratitude, the practice of gratitude is so important because why? A lot of times when we will only be grateful when somebody removes a certain thing out of our life. So instead of always waiting for something to be removed and then you go, oh, I really miss it and I should have cherished it. So instead of saying that, we can actually think, all right? So you can take some time out and think. Think about your family members. Think about your home. Think about your health. Think about your friends, your work. Everything that you're surrounded with on a daily basis, think how lucky and blessed we are to have all these things. Electricity, I have a computer in front of me that I talk to all of you. I have my watch, I have my handphone. I have clean water. I have clean air, of air conditioning, of electricity, of lights. All these things we take for granted because, well, since I was born, I had all these things. So what's there to think about? And that is because we've not been taught to be mindful. We've not been taught to be mindful about this. And we should never take these things for granted because why? It can be removed from our lives just like that. Just like how when the pandemic hit us, immediately everybody had to stay home and that's it. You could not get out of your home. Remember when the, when, when the lockdown first started? And then we go, oh, oh, how I miss going out and, and, and so on and so forth. Okay. Um, oh, there's a question. We came. There are a lot of self-development or self-help guru out there, more now than ever. However, the young people are struggling more than ever. Suited rates, I think she's trying to say suicide rates are increasing. Does this mean all these gurus don't work help? If so, why? Well, there are many people leaking that are setting that you know, message out. And this message of gratitude and, and, what, and all these self-help techniques have been around for a long time, okay? Uh, for a long time. I know that in Buddhism, um, it's, been, it's been taught by the Buddha, and I'm not sure about other religions because I've never studied them. But yes, yeah, so, you know, so ancient sages have also spoken about this. So it is not, uh, it is not something that we talk about now, okay? So these are all old uh, wise teachings that have been going on for thousands of years so it's not that the that the gurus don't work that the teachings don't work it is because of the culture that we're in right now i mean really who actually spends time to listen to you know to me talk about detoxing your mind who actually sits down on social media nowadays and listen to such in-depth uh, understanding of how the mind works because why people's focus attention span is very very short because that's the culture that's the social media culture instagram all this snapchat everything is just like this you know if your video is more than one minute okay next too long three minutes yeah i mean that's a huge stretch anything more than that forget it it's only for old school people like us you know, who, who are used to watching hours and hours of sitcom and all that. But really, that's how the culture is. So people don't have that patience to sit and go deeper. Unfortunately, 
I'm not saying all, I'm just saying that the culture is such. So the attention span is very short. It's just split seconds. Next, 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 next. And that's how it is. So, and that is why when the millennials, yeah, which is what I read, um, in Malaysia, uh, more, 51% of, I just read this as, as, you know, before, uh, as I was waiting for, for this show to go live. 51% of suicide of uh, suicide cases in Malaysia alone since 2019 until now are teenagers. Teenagers. 51%. It's because this pandemic puts a stop on all the distractions, on certain lifestyles, which are called distractions, um, and when you are not allowed to continue with a certain lifestyle, all right, people go have a withdrawal syndrome. You're not used to it. You feel stressed. You feel suffocated. All right. Um, so whatever it is that you do every day, you cannot do anymore. And you're and you're supposed to lock yourself in your house. It's like in the prison. So you know, you kind of spaz out. In other words, which I call a withdrawal syndrome. Your body and your mind are going through a withdrawal syndrome. So you're struggling big time and you just, and you just cannot help it. And, and that's one reason. And two is because the millennials are conditioned in the way that you find your happiness through social media, uh, how you look on social media, how many likes you get on, on social media, how many people look at you on social media. Everything is through the lens of your phone. And that's how it makes them excited. You know, excited and they look forward. Everything is social media. So their happiness is based, is derived from, the, you know, from how popular they are in social media. And that's very dangerous because why? It is dependent on social media. Okay, and I had a friend uh, t a few years ago who came from Shanghai. She's from Hong Kong, and she came here to um, to attend a program um, that Kachara had called Inner Peace Retreat. It's just an introduction on on um, meditation. And what happened is, well, during the during the the two day one night. Uh, program, you have to surrender your phone, and uh, you can only check your phone at the end, you know, at the end of the night. So, being in China, everyone, I mean, having lived in China for so long, and her in the fashion world, everything was from the phone. So, when she was told that you know this is what you need to do, you got to sit down and learn to meditate. I was told that she walked out. She she told the facilitator, no, that's it. I'm gonna walk out uh, of here. This is not for me. Okay, so to cut the long story short, she, she decided to challenge herself after the facilitator spoke to her. And after that, I met up with her and she said, you know, and she said, JP, I realize that all these years when you know when when there's a social media craze instagram facebook all that my happiness i get a kick out of always taking a picture of wherever it is that i go instead of looking at the thing and experiencing it yourself she was always very busy taking pictures and then immediately putting it on wechat so that her hundreds and hundreds of people who are in that group would actually click like and say oh you know i envy you and and just basically um, acknowledge and click light for, for whatever it is that she was sharing. And she said that when that was taken away from her, she realized that when she walked past a flower, she didn't realize how beautiful it was in person because every time it would be through the lens of a phone. And, she, and, a, and a sense of peace and joy uh, a rose for her just looking at it without going through the phone and she felt more at peace as a result so you see and that is what happens to the pandemic because when everyone is locked down 
and you had no point of reference of what you should do to handle your withdrawal syndrome, you don't have the tools, you don't have the knowledge, definitely you will spiral down. You will. Okay, and for some of my friends, yeah, they've been drinking and drinking and drinking. Why? It's a form of escape because they don't know how to handle it. So what's the way to do? Numb your senses by drinking. And then, of course, when you're, when you're, when you're high on alcohol, you're a bit woozy and that's how you handle it. So, but is, that, but is there a healthier way to handle it? Of course. And that's what this program is about, Detox Your Mind. Okay, so I hope that answers the, uh, that question, Yali, okay? Okay, so um, I have to quickly wrap this up. So how do you practice gratitude? Well, again, like I say, take some time out on a daily basis. Well, now that we are still in the lockdown in Malaysia, really look around, really open your eyes and look around what you have, clothes to wear, clean clothes to wear, clean water to wash yourself. Because if you have been to, to certain countries, even clean water is such a challenge. You know, even when I go brush teeth, I have to use filtered water to brush my teeth from the tap. And we take it for granted here. All right, so, and think about, you see right now, there are a lot of people starving on the streets. So when the, when the food is served in front of you, think about, be, be, be grateful that you have food. You don't have to think twice about any of your meals. So when you think about what others don't have, and, you, and when you look at the news and you look at how people are suffering big time and some are starving, and here we are in the compass of our home, we don't have those worries about starving and you know, even trying to live. Some of, pe some of the people are in ICU with COVID and they're fighting for their lives to live. Every breath they take is to hope that they will live one more second. And here we are taking our life for granted. Oh, I'll be happy if this happens. They are, if they, in their minds, they, will, they are happy if they can just live one more second. Think about it. Just being alive is good enough. So you can visualize yourself in that situation. And a lot of realizations will arise because then you will realize that all that pettiness and all that conditions that we put on ourselves in the name of happiness. If this happens, I'll be happy. If that happens, I'll be happy. Just be happy now. Just be happy now. So again, think about all the people who are fighting for their lives in ICU right now. Okay, um, and and for those of you who have who you know who go through a lot of challenges and obstacles in your life, which I said earlier, take a step back, at you know take a step back right now, and all the challenges that, and obstacles that you went through earlier in your life, and you actually survived it. What have you learned from it? How have you become? You see, it's anything can happen in front of us. It's our reaction to the situation or to the person that we have a choice that we are in full control. We cannot control what pe how, what pe how people treat us. We cannot control situations. That's beyond our control. We can try, but it's really beyond our control but we can always control how we react, how we choose to react to people and situations. Okay, so when we're mindful of that, that's where the power lies. That's where the power lies. There's always a silver lining to anything it is that we perceive. There's always a silver lining. And what does that mean? There's always something to learn from what we experience whether it is something that you like or something that, that, or there's something that you do not like. Whatever it is, you can always learn from it. Okay, so what's my, what is my point here? Change the way you look at challenges and obstacles in life. Instead of running away from it, go, go head on and overcome it. Because why? Whatever that you learn 
on how to deal and handle your challenges, your challenges and your obstacles, these tools will help you become a wiser person. And because of that, you'll be more resilient to more things that will happen to you in the future. Okay? Nature is such that it is full of, un of things that are unpredictable. Okay? That's the, that is how the universe is. It's so unpredictable. So as long as we have honed ourselves and, and pick up tools, skills, knowledge along the way, then we will be able to overcome whatever unpredictable circumstances that come our way. And we actually open our arms and welcome them. Because why? Because without these obstacles, we will never grow and we will, not, and we will never be a wiser person. So that's the silver lining, okay? I'm sure some of you are going to say, oh my God, how scary. But it's okay because baby steps, like I always say, always take baby steps. All right? Take baby steps and, and slowly change the way you perceive problems. Change. Okay? And, well, you can share with me. Okay? Maybe by the end of the year, what happens? I mean, look at last year, how we were dealing with, with COVID. Okay? There were so many uncertainties. And one year later, look, look, what, look what we have learned on changing our lifestyle to cope with that issue with that problem okay so what so you you became a wiser person you became more alert you had to be more alert because why because if you're not alert and you don't follow the sops there is a high chance that you will get infected by covid so it will cost you your life so so these are life experiences that we can learn from okay and last but not least like i always say have a gratitude journal because a gratitude journal will help you develop that habit of always looking at our blessings, always looking at the positive side to whatever it is that you go through, whatever. As long as you're breathing and alive, be happy. Be happy. That's a blessing. Everything else, yes, unpredictable, full of challenges, but hey, that is necessary to hone this raw diamond so that one day it will become a perfect cut and that's where the brilliance is okay so thank you very much on that note uh before i end today's session i would like to thank today's sponsor uh the first sponsor is anonymous dedication dedicated towards all beings liberation from suffering and attainment of compassion wisdom and true happiness Second sponsor is also anonymous. Dedication may remotely swiftly return to Kachara and turn the wheel of Dharma. And third, Lily Tan. Dedication may we develop clarity of mind and wisdom and always be blessed by the three jewels. Okay, so thank you very much. Now, if you do have questions on gratitude, by all means, please write on the comment section. I will, I will go back to that and I will um, answer your questions. Okay, and if you like... Uh, to join our group session. We do have a workshop uh, very shortly at 9.45, which is only a few minutes away. There is a link there that you can actually um, get a, a, what do you call it? You can email and you can, um, and, the, and our administrator will give you the link to the Google Meet, okay? So it will not be broadcasted. And that's why I walk you through on how to uh practice what i just spoke about and today's topic is on gratitude all right and again if you like today's topic please share on your facebook because the more you share you don't know who out there act will, will actually want to hear this and could actually make a huge difference in their life because something clicked okay so on that note thank you and i will see you next weekend take care bye